Uh, Mitch McConnell is speaking. We promised to bring that to you live. Here he is, the Senate leader. Disaster relief and border security. Within the Republican conference, there is strong support for the president's reasonable request for more resources to tackle the urgent situation at our southern border. Republicans support the House passed bill, which includes additional border security funding. And we're also, however, eager to complete the remaining appropriation bills, which the Senate has already passed. However, obviously, since any eventual solution requires 60 votes here in the Senate, it's been clear from the beginning that two things are necessary. Support from enough Senate Democrats to, to pass the proposal at 60 and a presidential signature. As a result, the Senate has voted to proceed to legislation before us in order, in order to preserve maximum flexibility for productive conversation to continue between the White House and our Democratic colleagues. I hope Senate Democrats will work with the White House on an agreement that can pass both houses of Congress and receive the president's signature. So, colleagues, when an agreement is reached, it will receive a vote here on the Senate floor. I move to concur in the House Amendment to the Senate Amendment to the House Amendment to the Senate Amendment to H.R. <laughs> 695. The motion is pending. <laughs> Mr. President. The Democratic leader. As we said to President Trump a week ago, his wall does not have 60 votes here in the Senate, let alone 50 votes. That much is now clear. Democrats have offered three proposals to keep the government open, including a proposal offered by Leader McConnell that passed the Senate unanimously only a few days ago. We are willing to continue discussions on those proposals with the Leader, the President, the Speaker of the House, and the Leader of the House. All five are necessary to get something done. Yield the floor. Mr. President. So there you hear, you heard it. What, what's happening is there's so many different appropriations bills. There are at least seven that we know that have passed through that we're waiting for confirmation. They're trying to find a way to shoehorn a little bit of wall funding in what they have already agreed to to pass. Uh, they're able to do that. They're going to be passing about six of the seven appropriations bills now with uh, now that are are in the process of going through the whole mechanism. You heard him say the House bill with the Senate bill. With a, with a House bill. This is Senator, Senator Corker, who's leaving the Senate from the Republican side. He's kind of a deal maker. Let's listen to him. The House. So there won't be test votes, not going to be a tabling vote. And the Vice President has been over here with his members negotiating already. What this does, I think, is push this ahead to a negotiation that yields a result and does the best we can to keep from shutting down government, or if it does shut down, shutting down very briefly. So I want to thank the two leaders for agreeing to go forward in this manner. It allows us to move forward in a positive way, and yet it keeps negotiations alive. Only a bill can pass this chamber now that has all of their agreements, and I thank them for going forward in this manner. Okay, so all of the peacemakers Senator are trying to get their licks in. I saw Jeff Flake get up after, uh, after that. There's Jeff Flake speaking. Of course, he's leaving the Senate as well. This is his last song. Let's take a listen. To ensure that the next vote that we have in this chamber will be on an agreement. As Senator Corker said, not a test vote, not a cloture vote. Um, what I, I wanted to do with not proceeding is to demonstrate that there then not all Republicans would be for the House bill either. There is no path forward for the House bill. The only path forward is to a bill that has an agreement between the President and both Houses of Congress. And the next time we vote will be on the agreement, not another test vote. Uh, so with that, uh, I yield back. Mr. President. Senator from Tennessee. Mr. President, I ask consent to following my remarks. The Senator from Delaware, Senator Coons, be recognized. 
Is there objection? <clears throat> Without objection. Mr. President, I want to thank Senator Corker, Senator Flake, Senator McConnell and Schumer and the leaders for their, for their discussions. The Vice President, I thank him for his presence here today. In my own view, uh, government shutdowns ought not to be a part of budget negotiations any more than chemical weapons should be a part of warfare. And we were elected to make the government run for taxpayers not to shut it down. So my hope is that this will put us on a path toward a result and recognize the president's desire for increased border security, which we support, which many Democrats support as well, uh, and we can finish our appropriations process. What I'd like to do now is say a few words about what was described in a very famous movie uh, in which Jimmy Stewart played. Uh, Mr. Smith goes to Washington as democracies finest show, the right to talk your head off, the legislative filibuster, and let someone say, well, Senator Alexander, you just announced you're not going to run for re-election in two years. Okay, so we're, we're going, going to break in here a little bit. What we're hearing from, by the way, are three senators back to back who are leaving the United States Senate, uh, some sooner than others. But the, the fact is, is that these are the, the classic uh, inside the Beltway deal makers who are trying to have their last licks at cobbling something together. Uh, it did seem, as I said from Chad Pergram, and I'll bring Liz here, and because you know Washington very well, that there's optimism about the possibility of shoehorning some kind of wall funding into an already approved appropriations bill. Do you think that's possible? Well,